Will you get additional points if you will subscribe? No, I don't need subscribers. <laughs> I need you to make, I need you to have subscribers. I don't need you to be my subscriber, right? I need you to make website. Okay, okay. Baptism. The Bible says that, para saan yung baptism? There's a Bible verse that says, Baptize and be forgiven of your sins and be saved. That's why in the, in the John the Baptist baptized Jesus, not because he has no sin, but because Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness. Yan. You know what? I will tell you a story. But please don't focus on the evil of the story, but on the good. When I was a child, I grew up in Adventist school. <clears throat> Some of the students like to read pocket books, spiritualism books. And when the week of prayer came, they started to hear and see things that nobody else are hearing. Like they see, oh, I will not tell you those things. And they started to have voice that is not theirs and be strong, etc. And they, but they be, decided to be baptized. That woman, student, they de, she decided to be baptized. But she saw that there is somebody standing behind the pastor in black. So the enemy wants to scare her not to be baptized. Now you will know that being baptized is good because Satan doesn't want you to be baptized. <clears throat> but she still decided to be baptized. When she was being baptized, the enemy really doesn't want her to be baptized. When she was walking down the baptismal pool, I was a kid. You know, the kids, they, they are not, uh, we are free to roam around. So I was beside the pool. I saw that the woman as, was in the middle of the pool, but she was not touching the ground. She was standing. She was standing, but her foot was not touching the floor of the pool, like one foot. She's floating, standing up floating. Because Satan doesn't want her to be put under the water. Baptism is really powerful. That's why Satan really hates it. Satan wants to change it, to make it sprinkling, to make it uh, not the real baptism in the Bible. You see, in the great controversy, Satan wants to fake everything. Baptism is like this, Satan wants to fake it. Uh, husband and wife is like this, Satan wants to fake it. Worship is like this, Satan wants to fake it. Church is like this, Satan wants to fake the church. Everything that God does, Satan wants to fake. The baptism in the Bible is like this. So what happened to that lady? <clears throat> After much praying and singing and confessing of our sins, finally the two pastors were able to put her under the water. From that time on, no more devil, devil possession. Yeah? No more demon possession of that lady. So that's from the fact that Satan really hates the baptism, I know now that after that baptism, that lady was not possessed by the evil spirit anymore. <clears throat> she used to throw away boys, like the boys are coming in. <laughs> but after baptism, no more evil possession. Some, some of them, after they call on Jesus' name, the enemy has to run away. You know why? In the great controversy, whoever you call to, for help, the other, the, the, ano, the enemy has to go away. If you call Satan's help, the angels, the good angels have to go away. If you call God's help, the evil angels have to go away. It depends who we call on. That's why we should make it our ano, practice to call on God's name. Lord, you help me. Lord, help me. When you have a problem, Lord, help me. And the enemy has to go away because we did not choose him, right? So the great controversy is about who do we call on? Because there is a, 
law in the great controversy, you cannot force people. But who people, who, who we call on, that's who we believe. <clears throat> Why do we do Lord's Supper? Because the Bible said, Jesus says, do it often in remembrance of me. We examine ourselves, we repent and confess, forgive one another because God forgave us also. <clears throat> if somebody operates my software, <laughs> adun tayo na stuck sa pa software para si last time. If this guy, Mr. Aklon, tama ba? Pirates my software, and I sue him. Do you think God will forgive me for all the pirated software I used before? <laughs> Imagine, I told you, I bought all the installers that I can buy in the mall, and I installed all of them in my computer, and clicked every menu, executed every exe, every com, every batch file I edited, I look what, everything is how it's working. After trying all of the operated software, now I am here selling software, <laughs> and this guy will operate my software. Should I forgive him or not? Of course, I have many sins. How can I not forgive the guy? So now the whole software industry is broken because of piracy. Anyway, <clears throat> that's why if you think you're going to be the, a professional IT guy, you have to, especially web develop, developers, we have to respect the law. Now it's become the law. Lord's Supper, okay? Spiritual gifts and ministries, yan. Some people, oh, the camera is not showing everything. It should show the, pic, the text more than me. And everybody has a role, role in the church. Prophecy, proclamation, teaching, administration, reconciliation. Some of, most of you, us uh, I, IT people, we are all shy, right? Who is shy here? Please raise your hand. Even raising your hand, you cannot raise your hand <laughs> because you are too shy to raise your hand. <clears throat> but we know how to make the computer work, right? Even if we don't understand the computer, right? Diva? We know how to make it work more than other people. That is our job, our, uh, no, that is our opportunity. <clears throat> you know what, class? I told you last time, God has given me so many cameras. I think I'm the person who has the most cameras in the Philippines. <laughs> God has given me many cameras. They are old. That's why there are many. <laughs> if you buy new cameras, you'll finish your money, just few of them. But if you buy old cameras, you can buy a lot because they are old. Of course, many of them will be broken, <laughs> but at least you have many cameras. <laughs> yes, some of them are broken. The reason I have all these cameras is because the more ministries I help, the more reward I will get in heaven. Revelation 22:12 12 says, For behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, according as every man his work shall be. So the more ministry, media ministry I help with, and if they get baptism, I get stars in heaven, right? So the, if you want to have 1,000 stars a year, you have to lend your equipment to many ministries, and when all of those ministries collect people for the church, then you get also points, right? That's why I invite all of you also to help me and to help other ministries so that you will also get points in heaven. Because if this guy helps me, and one person gets to heaven because we help somebody preach. I get points. The one who preaches gets points. He gets points also. Everybody who helps gets points in heaven. Yeah, and that's why I like to have camera because it helps a lot. And it helped me also because I watch many videos of sermons in the U.S. I don't have a passport to go to the U.S., a visa. But because of the video ministry of other people there, uh, it helped me grow spiritually. And I also want to help to use it, the same thing to others, to grow spiritually. And <clears throat> so that is uh, one of the spiritual gifts and ministry. For the keeping, equipping of the service. And gift of prophecy. <clears throat> Uh, 
Do you want to be prophet? Do you know that all of us are supposed to be prophets? But we are supposed to be true prophets. 1 Corinthians 14 says, the gift of love, the gift of compassion, the gift of like this faith, they are all good. But prophecy is the best. Yeah? <clears throat> Let me read that one. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Oy. Pursue love, pursue spiritual gifts, but especially that you must, that you may prophesy. You know? Love is okay, spiritual gifts is okay, but especially that you may prophesy. Oh, diba? So, you, we are all invited to become prophets. <clears throat> but let us prophesy only things that are according to the Bible. Sabi dito, desire earnestly. No, 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 no. We should read the King James Version. King James Version is more powerful. The words they put in this verse are more amazing. Look, look, look. Nandito yun sa last verse ng 1 Corinthians 14. <clears throat> it says here, class, Kuvet to prophesy. Eh, no? Kuvet. This is the only thing the Bible allows to kuvet. Prophecy. If you see somebody preaching, I would like to be preacher also. That is biblical. The Bible says, Kuvet to prophesy. I want to preach also like that guy. Oh, diba, diba, diba? Did you read it? Where's the reference? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 39. You can covet to become a preacher. If you want to see, see ah, that guy is good in preaching, I want to be like him also. That is very good. The Bible says, covet to prophesy. And the Bible also says, <clears throat> in verse 1, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Okay. Next. How do you know who is true prophet and false prophet? How do you know which money is uh, fake and true? If you know what is true, right? How do they know which part, which, uh, do you know the book, the Bible has 66 books. How do they collect all the books? How do they know? The library has many books. How do they know which book is included, supposed to be included in the Bible? How do they know that Moses is a true prophet of God? How do they know that Abraham is Speaking things of God. How did they know that Adam? Ah, Adam is real. <laughs> you have no choice. You have to believe whatever the Adam says, right? Because no, nobody else is older than Adam. Adam is the one God created, and Adam talked to God. So what Adam, whatever Adam said, <clears throat> is probably true. I mean, who else will you ask? Eve. No, no don't believe Eve too much. She is the problem. <laughs> She is the reason why we all fell to sin. <laughs> According to the Bible, it is Eve that sinned. <clears throat> anyway, the problem is Adam believed sin, uh, Eve also. So, anyway, if we want to know God's word, we ask Adam, right? And then Enoch came along. Enoch is also saying what Adam said. According. So Enoch is true, prophet, because he is telling what Adam was saying. And then also comes Job, and Isaiah, and Jeremiah, and uh, Micah, and Malachi, and other prophets. How do we know they are true? If they are saying what Moses was saying. How do we know Moses is true? If he is saying what Enoch was saying. Diba kasi sigurado natin si Abraham? When I, I see, I know, see Adam, but Adam only lived 900 something years. So when Adam died, Enoch maybe was still around, or some other prophets were there. God always provides a prophet for every generation. The Bible says, I have not left without a witness. There is always a prophet. God provides prophet. <clears throat> so if, if Adam has died and Enoch is around, we are sure what Enoch is saying because we heard what they were saying when Adam was alive. So when Enoch was taken to heaven, maybe Ezekiel was there or somebody else. How do we know which is true prophet and false prophet? We compare with other prophets that we are true. 
that, but that we are sure of. New prophets do not contradict old prophets. Because Jesus himself says, I do not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come to fulfill. So imagine, Jesus cannot contradict the old prophets. Jesus cannot, he is God, but he cannot contradict. He does not contradict. Because the source of information is God. There is no conflict. So I, since there is one source of information, whoever the prophet is, they are saying the same thing, right? That's why you will know who is the false prophet. Because if it doesn't, if they are not saying according to the old ones, they are not true. Do you understand, sir? You are looking at me as if you understand. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So now, how do we know that Serwin is telling the truth? How do you know that Serwin is telling the truth? If I am saying, what is? According. Yeah, that's the key word, according. If I am saying what is according to the Bible, how do you know that the Bible is true? Because the Bible, because everybody believes the Bible, right? Because, uh, yeah, everybody believes the Bible. Everybody thinks the Bible is true. So if I'm saying what the Bible is, how do they know that New Testament is true? Because New Testament is saying what the Old Testament was saying, right? It's just going back, reference, reference. How do I know that you are true prophet? If what you are saying is, according to what I am sure is a true word of God. How do we know Ellen White is a true prophet? You read the whole Bible, you read all her writings, and then you will know if she is according, right? Because Isaiah 8.20, according to the law and the testimony, if they speak not, there is no light. So the Bible says, in the last days, there will be many false prophets. False prophets, they are not teaching according. But the Bible also says, <clears throat> you have to prophesy. That means we are supposed to be the true prophets. Yan. Law of God, yan. class, law of God. Let's look for the law of God. <clears throat> By the way, uh, why, why is uh, Serving preaching in the web development class? Because Ellen White says, it is the duty of the teacher to, to tell the distinctive truth. Sorry, I was supposed to view the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments is in Exodus 20, correct? Not Exodus 8. But I want to read the KJV because that's what I memorized when I was a kid. It says here, class, <clears throat> Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, class, so you should not worship YouTube. You should not worship Facebook. You should not worship your cell phone. You should not worship HTML. <laughs> you should not worship. They are just tools to worship God. Amen? Okay. Do not worship technology because technology, we just put under the water, it will not work anymore. Diba? <laughs> but if your water has no, is pure, it will still work. Oh, diba? Do not worship your teacher. No, do not worship me. Do not worship. Ano pa bang minu worship na mga tao ngayon? Yourself. Di ba? Do not worship your ideas. Nako naghang na. Oh, that's why we should not worship that computer because the computer is unreliable. Wala na hang na. Okay, you know why my computer hung? Oh, it's working again. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven, that is in earth, that is in the water. Thou shalt not bow down to self, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Third and fourth generation, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Do you know how, how do you know that God, that you love God? Class, how do you measure your love for God? Do you know how? Is there an objective way to say, I love God, I don't love God? Do you know where is the verse for measuring? It's in 1 John 2, 3. There is a verse 
for objectively measuring your love for God. That is not according to me or to somebody else. This may we be sure. We know him is to keep... Oh, this is other, other translation. <clears throat> because a pastor asked me, I will tell you a story. A pastor asked me, how is your relationship with Jesus? And then I said, I don't know. But this verse says that we, should, we are sure we know him if we keep his commandments. So how do we know that we love God? If we keep his commandments. <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, you are IT people. There is an IT question. The Bible says, six days thou shalt do all thy work, but on the seventh day, you, your son, daughter, manservant, maidservant, cattle, does it include the computers in your house? Okay, now you are wondering. <clears throat> I will give you my, my understanding. My understanding is, it depends on the one who made the computer. You know why? Because God is giving commandments about Sabbath because he made us. Diba? God invented humans and God said, this is the manual. The Bible is the manual. You do this one. If I buy camera, I read Panasonic manual, right? It's there. Since we are created by God, God has the right to tell us the manual, what to do. But who created the computer? You. You, right? We created computer. So with whatever to do with the computer, we can tell, we can dictate. Diba, diba? Do you understand? God created the river, the heart, the sun, the lungs. They all work even on the Sabbath. Because God said, continue to work. But God said, don't work. I mean, don't uh, cook. Don't uh, work like, you know, make money on the Sabbath. Therefore, we obey God. The computer, no problem. We are the ones who created the camera, the computer. We can do whatever they want, uh, whatever we can, because we are the creator. Whoever the creator is, he is the one to be followed. Yeah? When you create website, you are the one, you are the god of that website. Diba? But we are not, we cannot create ourselves. That's why we obey God. Okay, that's very simple. Whoever created, he is the one who will be followed. I was one of the people who created Iolis. We are many, we are five. And we set the nature like this, like this. Some of my students, they made my AUP life book, and they are the boss of my AUP life book, right? Oh, now you have hope. Sir Ian is my student. The one who made my AUP life book is my student. But please don't blame me for all the error. <laughs> diba? Me, we are many who made Iolis. I'm just one of them. The others, they went, or they, they went to get more money elsewhere. <laughs> because in the school, you don't make so much money. I'm all, the reason I'm here is because I want to preach to students before teaching them how to do it. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah, that is why we, God has the right to command us because he created us. And we will also create and you have the right. If you create something, you have the right to say what is happened. Honor thy father and thy mother so that you will have long life. Thou shalt not kill. The Bible, Jesus said, that it is written, thou shalt not kill. But I say unto you, if you say bad words to your neighbor, you are in danger of judgment. Oh, diba? I told, I, I joined the atheist group in Facebook. And then I posted there. I used to be an atheist because God did not answer my prayers. I deleted God from my mind. But God's still there. <laughs> For two weeks, I was an atheist when I was college. But I did not survive. I remembered all of God's goodness and said, I, and then I realized whether I delete God or not in my mind, God is still good to me, therefore God is there, right? Because you know what, when I was a kid, my mom left me in the double deck. And then he, she put a pillow. And then she went out of the house of the Sampagita. We, we were visiting in Sampagita dorm. She went out of the dorm with her friends to the cafeteria. When they came back, I was on the floor. I'm from the double deck. But I was sleeping very nicely on top of the pillow. 
So maybe I kick the pillow, <coughs> the pillow fell, and then I start, I also dive down, but I was nicely sleeping on top of the pillow. How can you explain? There is a God in heaven, right? Diba? I mean, I don't know, I was sleeping, I don't even know. I'm three months old. So I said, maybe there is a God in heaven. Because of God good, God's goodness, you have no other explanation that there is a God in heaven. Okay, then I became a Christian again. Amen. So I joined the atheist, I know, I joined the atheist group in Facebook, <clears throat> and then I posted there. I have a Microsoft Office PowerPoint, and I made a slide. Microsoft does not exist. Oh. Diva, diva. Using PowerPoint, I put a slide. Microsoft does not exist. Can you understand that uh, insult to them? <laughs> and then I put another post. I have a Mac book. I made a keynote slide that says Apple does not exist. Oh, diva. Using an Apple computer, I made a slide. Apple does not exist. Oh, diva. So the, all the atheists were angry at me <laughs> because I made a fool out of them. By the way, the Bible says the one who says there is no God is a fool. The fool says in his heart there is no God. Proverbs. <clears throat> so they all sent the bad words in the dictionary to me. Now you know where all the bad words come from. They are from people who hate God. All the bad words in the dictionary and all the bad words in the internet, they sent to my private message. So in one Sabbath, I blocked like this many people. Most of them atheists. People who hate, they know there is God. That's why they're angry. <laughs> they don't want to obey. They only want to say bad words. That's why Jesus said, those, if you say bad words to your neighbor, it's, you are in danger of judgment. It's like killing. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus said that it is written, I'm quoting Matthew 5, I think Matthew 5. Jesus was expounding on the Ten Commandments. Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt not commit adultery, but if you look at a lady with lust in your heart, you are committing adultery with her in your heart, right? My question is, who is committing adultery? The man or the woman? The man? Those who think man, you raise your hand. We have both. Those who think woman, you raise your hand. Those who think both. Ah. Both. Because Jesus says, committing adultery with. Can you commit adultery alone? That's why it's called adultery. There has to be at least two people, right? Or three. <clears throat> so the Jesus said, with her. That means the woman who, who is displaying her legs <laughs> unnecessarily to uh, wearing uh, revealing clothes is committing adultery with the one who is also looking with lust, right? Because it says with her, diba? with her. So what are you going to tell our, teach our sisters? Just wear the blanket. <laughs> and, but no, I'm just kidding. There is an objective way. Do you know, class, how long the, uh, no, the, do you know how long are the, has, has anybody told you how long is the skirt should be? Nobody. Because they are afraid that you will be angry with them. But I found out in Ellen G. White's writings how objectively how long. And the school uniform is not correct. <laughs> so if you want to follow what is in the writings, this the references. Oh, naghang na yung computer ko. Maybe my computer doesn't want to know the truth. You know what? <clears throat> Since you are IT people, I will discuss why my computer hangs. I disabled virtual memory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Or I need to explain. You know what virtual memory is? I have four gig of RAM. I have 120 gig of, uh, I have to reboot. I have, while I'm rebooting, I will explain. I have four gig of RAM, four gig only. I'm poor guy, you know, I have a small laptop. I don't like to bring big laptop. I have four gig of RAM, and I have 120 gig of SSD. If I open too many windows, all of those objects, etc., they consume plenty of memory. If I open more tabs, the tabs have many videos and many pop-ups, they consume more memory. 
virtual memory is you can malloc, you know malloc, have you ever programmed in C? You can allocate request and request the operating system for memory even if you don't have actual RAM. The operating system will do magic. It will transfer the least recently used. Did I restart or did I shut down? I think I. It, the operating system will transfer the least recently used blocks of memory to the hard disk, to the SSD, and vacate RAM so that you can still continue to add more tabs and windows and so on and pretend there is still memory. The least recently used pages of RAM will be swapped into the uh, disk. If you are using hard disk, it's about 70 megabytes per second. If you're using SSD, it's about 200 megabytes per second, which is faster, and zero seek time. <clears throat> so your computer just works slower if there are too many open windows. But it still continues to work even if you are allocating memory more than your actual memory. That's why it's called virtual memory. <clears throat> the operating system takes care of that. Problem is, it's slower, right? It's slower. The solution is to add RAM. Problem is, that I have no more RAM slots. This is a thin computer. There is no RAM slots. It's soldered in the motherboard. <clears throat> so the operating system is swapping virtual memory. The problem is the SSD has a TBW. You know TBW? Terabytes writable, terabytes written. If you buy SSD, you look at the TBW of that model, and you will know how many terabytes you can write to the SSD before it breaks. Right? Your SSD breaks after two years, depending on how many terabytes you write. So <clears throat> SSDs, SD cards, USB drives, they are all like EEPROM. There's a number of times you can write before it stops working, right? In EEPROM, it's called write, write cycle. How many write cycles? It's about 200,000 write cycles. <clears throat> In SSDs, they are bigger. So there's a, there's a way to, leve, to level the write cycles. Because if, you know, in, in an SSD, only the first part of the hard disk gets written. You write a new file, they write something there. You write a new file, everything that you write, something is adjusted in the index. So that part will break first, right? In SSDs, they, they are remapped so that they all break almost at the same time. And the total computation is called TBW. So if you use SSD, there is a total bytes written before it disappears. It will disappear someday. It's like a candle, and then it will stop working. <clears throat> so when you buy SSD, you look at the TBW. The problem is, if you have little RAM, your virtual memory will write in the hard disk. And when it writes a lot, your TBW it gets finished quickly. And within one year, two years, if you have four gig of RAM, you open too many windows. <laughs> one morning, turn on your computer, no more hard drive, no more SSD. Has that happened? Yes, you have so many classmates that happened, right? And you also. Why did it happen? Because your virtual memory is on. That's why me, I turned off my virtual memory. What happens when I open too many tabs? It just crashes. <laughs> but my SSD lives longer. I'm saving my SSD for long life, but SSD is only 1,000 pesos, right? SSD is only 1,600 pesos, I think, 128 gig. <clears throat> but the worst thing is, if your SSD is soldered to your board, what happens? You have see, only 8 gig of RAM, your SSD is soldered to your board, and you don't remove, you don't deactivate virtual memory, and you open too many windows, you have your Mac will be in the repair soon. That's why there are so many Mac computers in the repair shop that cannot be repaired because the SSD is soldered. You cannot just buy 1,000 pesos SSD and put it there. It doesn't fit because the Mac is thin. There's no space. That's why Apple is very rich because people who don't know computer <laughs> are buying those thin computers with soldered SSD, and after two years, after one year of using too much, they, the whole thing breaks, and they buy another 70,000, 80,000 Mac, right? Instead of just 
if you use PC, you just buy 128 peso SSD, 6, 600, 1000 peso. In the year, you have a, like a new computer, right? That's why Apple is rich, because many people don't understand. Uh, so the repair people in the YouTube, they have a pile of Macs. <laughs> SSDs are broken. The board cannot be used. Full Mac, what can you do? Just buy new Mac. OK, what were we talking about, class? OK, that's why I rather crash my computer than destroy my SSD. OK. Control Shift Tab, Control Shift T opens all the other windows that we closed. OK, before. And 10 commandments. We are talking about the Sabbath. <clears throat> Why is there Sabbath commandment? Because God is creator. Yan. Ah, tapos na palaray dyan. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Or we are talking about the length of dress. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sabi ni Ellen White class, ito, the bottom of the dress should reach the near top of the lady's boot. So girls, I have good news. This is not bad news. This is good news. You know why? You know why? Because you will have nice dress. It is your chance to buy new one. Oh, do you like new dress? Do you like new dress? If you find out your dress is wrong, there is no other choice to buy new dress. But if you like, but who doesn't like new dress? Tell me, who doesn't like new dress? So if you find out, you blame the people who did not tell you the truth, diva. Right? Because your elders, your pastors, your teachers before did not tell you. That's why. We don't know. But now that I'm telling you, the bottom of the dress should reach the near top of the boots. So in the picture, it's like this. This is wrong because it's too long. This is short, wrong because it's too short. And this is right, if you read the text, actually. Don't worry about the student uh, handbook. It's not aligned with this one. This one, we are not sure if that is a true prophet. But this one, we are sure Ellen White is true prophet, right? So <clears throat> when a pastor tells you something, an elder tells you something, make sure it's according, and then you believe, right? So even if I tell you something, don't believe. You Google and see if it's in the Bible and spirit of prophecy, then you believe. Because you don't know if I'm true or false. I'm still alive. I can still become false. Ellen White and the Bible people are dead already. We are all, we'll all know that they are true. And so <clears throat> you tell your sisters this one, and then you tell them, just go to Ukay Ukay. You know, there is a store in Balibago, the cheap, nice store. There are many long, nice clothes there, correct ones. Yeah, so I tell my friends, let's go to uh, no, Ukay Ukay. 600 peso, 300 peso, nice dress. OK, next one, class. Thou shalt not steal. OK. I told you last time I stopped using pirated software when I was second year college. That was 1998. Oh, E-commerce law outlaws pirated software, the use and the resale of pirated software in 2000 in the Philippines. So the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. And the, land, the law of the land said, thou shalt not pirate software. Right? That's why IT people have to become good example. Oh. Diba? You delete all your pirated software in your computer, and God will bless your, ano, your profession. Even if your website is uglier, they cannot remove it because there is Bible verse. Oh, diba? You, you try to obey God's law, I will tell you, God will bless your profession. Your programs will run even if you are tired of them already. <laughs> that is my testimony. I, I don't make the best programs, but my programs are still running by God's grace, maybe because I decided not to use pirated software. Diba? The people who use this one and this one, their programs crash every week. That's why it's unreliable. Because they use pirated to software to lay out, and they use pirated software to, for the operating system, crash. Some of my programs, I forgot they are running already, but they are still running. <laughs> okay, 
So God will bless you if you don't steal from other software programmers. Yeah, di ba? Who else will preach this but IT people, right? Di ba, di ba? What is the basis and spiritual, pro spiritual prophecy? In the book, Counsels to Writers and Editors, Ellen G. White says we should respect intellectual property. Because if you make a program, that is your stewardship to God. That is not the ownership. If you write a book, does the church own the book? No, it has your own name. You are the author, right? So Ellen White wrote books. The books don't belong to the church. She, it belongs to her. Of course, when she died, she said, we should have organization to manage my books. And then later, that organization said, we can't manage it. OK. Do not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And OK, let's go. Anong oras na? 9.36 I am tired of preaching. Maybe you are tired of listening also. But, ano? <laughs> but, uh, okay. We finish with the Ten Commandments. No problem. I have something more terrible to you to say. This is the most terrible thing I am going to say, the whole class. Not about the dress. This is more terrible. People who don't obey this, they die immediately. Immediately eh? in the Bible. When God said, don't cook on the Sabbath, and somebody picked sticks on the Sabbath for cooking, Moses said, what do we do with this? Let's ask God. And God said, you stone him to death. That means it is serious. Diba adultery as serious in the Bible? If you read, if somebody is committed Adultery, they should be stoned to death. Why? Because adultery is serious. So when Mary Magdalene was caught, everybody wants to stone her, but Jesus saw that she is repenting. When you repent, Jesus will defend you. So if you commit adultery, just repent, Jesus will defend you. If you kill somebody, repent, God will protect you. Repentance is very important and very easy. You just ask God sorry, and God will cover you. You know, God will cover you like a, a bomb, shell, bomb shelter. <laughs> Everybody, because that's the reason why Jesus came to die, to cover the people who wants to repent. Yeah, very amazing. So God said to the Israelites in Exodus 16, the Sabbath is tomorrow. You pick up twice as many manna, and you cook it now. And then on the Sabbath, you cook, eat the remaining, the remaining, yeah? <clears throat> so God told the Israelites, don't go cafeteria on the Sabbath. <laughs> the cafeteria in the wilderness. I'm not talking about AAP. <laughs> I'm talking about the cafeteria in the wilderness. God said to the, to the Israelites, don't go out and pick manna on the Sabbath. You go Friday, you pick twice manna, and it will not spoil. Somebody, I have a friend who is taking theology in IS before. He told me, you know, we should not cook on Sabbath. And you know, I am proud. I grew up, I was born in PUC. I, was grew, I grew up in Nagaview. I took college here. I, I'm still here. So all my life, I'm in Adventist school. My parents worked in Adventist school. So I know all of the excuses we have for cooking on the Sabbath. So I need to debate this guy. And I have to find official statements, right? So I said, let me Google for official statements. And I, we are IT people. We know how to use the Google. Problem in class is, I could not find any official statements of the church that said it's OK to cook on Sabbath. Even if the whole life, my whole life was a lie. <laughs> I was taught in school by my they were taught unofficial truths. So I have a question for you. If everybody teaches like this, but the official statements teach something else, who do we follow? Do we follow the PhD? <clears throat> the PhD can resurrect us? No. Can the Bible resurrect us? Can God's word resurrect us? Yes. We are sure about the Bible. We are sure about Ellen White. We are sure about the voted statements of the church. 
they all say we should not cook on Sabbath. But my pastor, my elder, my teacher, they are all saying it's okay. Who do I believe? Tell me, class. Who will I believe? My teacher, I love them, but they cannot resurrect me. They are not, they are trying their best. Maybe they were misinformed. All of the official statements are all saying, you know, if, if the Bible says you should not, spirit of prophecy says you should not, I'm okay. Whatever the church does, maybe it's wrong. Or whatever the church says, maybe it's wrong. Two, the two, everything the church says is based here. So if it's temporarily wrong, you know, before the Adventist church was serving pork, because we did not know. But the Bible and the spirit of prophecy are, we are sure. But if they all align, if the Bible, spirit of prophecy, and Adventist.org, if they all say we should not cook on the Sabbath, I mean, how can you contradict that, right? No, even if I have five PhDs in theology, I cannot contradict that. So <clears throat> I changed my position. I had to teach the official statements, even if all Filipinos forgot how to keep the Sabbath. I am teaching the official statements of the church from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, even if 99.9% .9 of Filipinos have forgotten how to keep the Sabbath. Yeah? I will show you the, the, no, the official statements. Man. Everybody wants to believe, uh, to obey. I see all of your eyes. You are curious because you want to know the truth, and I know that you want to obey. I assume you want to obey, but you just don't know how because you think your spoil will, your, your food will spoil. Yeah. I, I. Everybody wants to obey. I assume. The Bible says Exodus 16. You know, Ten Commandments is Exodus 20. This is before Exodus 20. So Sabbath cooking was even before the Ten Commandments they were given. It says tomorrow is the rest day. Bake before sift. Sift is uh, boil. And that is the remaining you will eat in the morning. That's the Sabbath. But they did not understand. The Israelites did not understand. And they went and tried to gather. And God said, Moses, how long will you obey my commandments? Whose commandments is Sabbath cooking prohibition? Is it Moses' commandment? No. God is scolding Moses. Is it Pharisee commandment? No. There is no Pharisee in Exodus. Pharisee is New Testament. Is it uh, Servian commandment? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> I am nobody. I'm just, I'm just uh, making PowerPoint. I'm making slides. So it is God's commandment. Moses is being scolded. Okay, let's get, see if, you know what, in the Adventist church, if you want to know, everybody reads the Bible and claims to read the Bible. But if they don't agree with Ellen White, probably they are wrong. So how do we know that we understand the Bible correctly? We read Bible Ellen White. Yeah? Because Ellen White, we know sure that he, she understands the Bible. Because the Bible is in Greek and Hebrew, maybe the translation is not correct. But Ellen White is English writer. There is no, not much change in words. Ellen White says, those who neglect to prepare to, for the Sabbath. Ah, the technique here is to prepare. If you don't prepare, you will get hungry. So if you don't prepare and you cook food, you value, violate the fourth commandment. Okay, this one is very clear, right? You are valuation and it is the fourth commandment. So <clears throat> what is the official statement? What is the reference? The cooking should be avoided uh, this one it says here cooking on Sabbath should be avoided it is not therefore necessary to eat cold food and cold weather the food prepared the day before should be heated okay my question is this is the most common excuse you can heat therefore you can cook but that is a misquotation you know why they do not read this one prepared the day before Diba? The, most of the theologians will say since you can heat Therefore, you can cook. But in the middle, there is saying, prepared the day before. We are supposed to heat the food we prepared on Friday. They are not reading this one. They are just reading the heat and the cook. But they are skipping the prepared the day before. That is a mistake, OK? That the old people were doing, misquoting the spirit of prophecy. <clears throat> so the reason is logical, you know? Why do you need to heat if you can cook, right? The reason you heat is because you cooked the other day. I mean, if you can cook, no need to heat. So why do you heat? 
because it's cold. Because you reheat. It's, it was cooked before. So don't remember, don't forget to coat the whole thing. Don't, the Satan always wants to remove some things to confuse us. But maybe it's not their mistake. They just did not read properly. <clears throat> Official statements, the URL is there. The buying and preparation, okay. Preparation is cooking, buying is buying. You know what buying means? Lazada, Shopee, whatever. <laughs> Add to cart, right? And go to Jollibee or McDo or Pizza Hut. Why are we not supposed to buy? Because uh, Nehemiah 13 says, Ezra, uh, ne uh, Nehemiah said, you close the gate of Israel because Shopee and Lazada are coming. And then Shopee and Lazada were camping outside the gate. Nehemiah said, don't camp outside the gate. I will lay my hands on you if you camp again. Diba? So that quotation is from Nehemiah chapter 13. Buying and preparation should be done before the sundown Friday. If you go to Adventist Biblical Research, same document. If you go to Docs, the archives, the same document, type written. If you read the yellow book, it says, prepare before the Sabbath. If you read Adventist Mission, they also know. If you read Tagalog, by, Tagalog uh, document from North Philippine Union Mission, it says the mother should prepare the food before the Sabbath. So that is the official statement and the most difficult thing I'm going to tell you. Because if, even if you see, look at the CLC Bible, you know this Bible we give to newly baptized, you look at the last pages, it says there, what is the regulation for the Sabbath food? It says there, it quotes Exodus 16, 23. <clears throat> so if you were, if you were taught uh, incorrectly, like I was taught incorrectly, let's forgive them and then let's just teach what is true. But the nice thing class, everybody wants to obey and tips. I collected all the tips that uh, reached me through messenger and through testimonies. And I listed them all here. I am listening to people, and if God is uh, allowing all this truth to reach me, and I just put all of them in my blog, so that the other people who want to obey can just copy what they are doing. Because I assume everybody wants to obey God's word. They are stressed because they don't know, because they were not taught. So the solution is to teach. How do we do it? And I just collected all the testimonies I heard from many, many people, how they do it, and how to do it, and how they were used to do it before they backslid, before they forgot. Even this uh, guy, he is an atheist, but he knows how to do it. He said, just fast. <laughs> don't eat anything. You will save money. You don't have to wash dishes, and so on. I tried it. It gave me headache. <laughs> but all the ministries I was helping, they exploded like so big. I don't know what's wrong with, what's, what's with fasting. I just experimented. I fasted all Sabbaths in one year, and all the ministries I was helping, like they exploded. I mean, they became very successful. So I got tired of fasting. I stopped fasting on Sabbath, and uh, no more ministries. <laughs> all the ministries became like normal, not, you know, ex extra. So I don't know, maybe. <clears throat> so there are many, many tips here. You can just Google them. And uh, so many, so many, so many examples. There, and there are so many other people who are telling me, but it's the same technique, so I'm not adding. So if we have examples, we have God's law, then it will help people obey, right? Diba, diba? Because people want to obey. This is the cafeteria in Ukraine. You know why Ukraine is being attacked? Because the Adventists there, even their cafeteria, doesn't cook on Sabbath. That's why Putin is possessed by evil spirit, <laughs> and he wants to destroy University of Adventist University of Ukraine. So somebody from Ukraine told me, even she was shocked because in Philippines, everybody cooks on the Sabbath, Adventist. In their country, before you get baptized, they tell you, you, you do this, you do this. This is how you keep the Sabbath, according to the Bible. And everybody there knows how to keep the Sabbath. But Filipinos, you know why the fourth commandment starts with remember? Because God knows Filipinos are forgetful, right? How about in your country, sir? Did you forget also? Now, I will not ask you because you might. <laughs> Let us just help each other remember. Everybody forgot. Even I forgot before. So 
while God helps us remember, let us help other people remember also and help them at uh, techniques and the science and uh, the accurate accordingness. Okay, is it time? It's, I'm across one, one minute. Yeah, this is the most difficult. Sabbath will be the biggest test in the end time. And Ellen G. White says, food is one of the hardest to overcome. You know how many people don't, are fighting me because they don't want to be vegetarian? <laughs> food is the hardest, one of the hardest. Sabbath will be the most difficult. If you combine food and Sabbath, it will become Sabbath cooking. So it's very hard, right? Because it has something to do with Sabbath, biggest test. It has something to do with food. When you talk about food, people are angry. But the Bible will not change the, its mind. And Ellen G. White will not change her writings. We have to repent and help other people obey. OK, any question, class? You plus. If you have any question, you can ask Google. You can ask Google whether or not the answer is right. I don't know. OK, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the time where I can uh, tell the students uh, truths. Help us to uh, be intelligent and careful on what to believe. And before we publish and make websites and publish the truth of your word in all the world, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we can make websites telling the truth, <laughs> not telling lies.